What are bonds? Companies and governments sometimes need to get money without giving away ownership, so they sell bonds. Bonds are like loans that have a specific time limit. Investors buy these bonds and in return, they receive regular interest payments until the agreed upon time period is over. So how do bonds work? Bonds are like certificates representing long-term loans, but people don't always keep them until the end of the loan period. The value of a bond can go up or down based on current interest rates and how confident investors are about getting their money back from the borrower. There are different types of bonds, like savings bonds, company bonds, and government bonds, also called U.S. Treasury securities. Some bonds can be bought and sold between investors. In savings bonds, people put a lump sum of money with a retail savings institution, like a bank, get regular interest, and eventually get back the original sum they invested. Other bonds, however, don't guarantee repayment of the initial amount because the borrower might go out of business. Government bonds, known as gilts, are considered the safest because the chance of the government not paying back is very low. So, how to invest in bonds? When investors pick a bond, they have to consider two important things, how much interest they'll get and the chance of getting back the initial amount they invested. They also need to figure out if a bond is a good deal by looking at its current yield. This compares the interest paid by the bond with its current value if you want to sell it. Even though bondholders have a bit better chance of getting paid back compared to shareholders if a company fails, it's still not guaranteed that they will receive the money. It's a balance between potential interest and the risk of not getting the initial investment back. Let's understand some important terms. Term number one is face value, the initial price at which the bond was originally issued. Term number two is market or par value, the current price at which a bond is traded in the market. Term number three is coupon, the amount of interest paid to bond investors at regular intervals. Term number four is yield, a general term that refers to the return on the capital invested in a bond. Term number five is savings bonds, cash deposits that earn a regular interest rate. Term number six is securities, financial instruments like bonds that can be bought and sold in the market. Term number seven is junk bonds, bonds issued by highly risky companies carrying a higher chance of default. Term number eight is default. When a company fails to honor a repayment on a bond sold to an investor, indicating a failure to meet financial obligations. Term number nine is current yield. The current yield is the interest rate that the bond is currently paying, expressed as a percentage of its current market value. It gives investors an idea of the return they are earning based on the bond's current trading price. Term number 10 is yield calculation. Yield is calculated by dividing the coupon amount by the bond price and then multiply that by 100. Let's now look at an example to better understand bonds. Investors give $1,000 to a company and in exchange, they receive a bond certificate. When a water company issues bonds at $1,000 each, it's like taking out loans from investors. For every bond someone buys, the company gets $1,000. Along with agreeing to pay back the loan, the company also regularly gives interest payments, which are called coupons, to the people who own the bonds. In year one, if the coupon rate is 10%, it means the water company regularly pays out 10% of the face value of the bond, which is the price it was sold for. In this case, as the face value is $1,000, the coupon payment is $100. Investors have the option to sell their bond certificates for $100, representing the interest they're entitled to receive. The bond market value is $1,000. O in year one, the yield on the bond is $100. This is calculated based on the bond's market value, which is $1,000, and the interest rate it is paying, which is 10%. So, 
10% of the market value, $1,000, equals $100 representing the yield for that year. In year two, if the company is doing well and is considered a secure investment, the market value of the bond, meaning the price that other investors are willing to pay for it, goes up. Some investors might decide to sell their bond certificates for a 20% profit, taking advantage of the increased value. However, others may choose to hold on to their bonds to continue receiving the regular interest payments. The bond market value is $1,200. Oh, in year two, the yield on the bond is 8.33%. Despite the interest remaining the same, the yield percentage decreases because the bond is now providing a 10% return based on its initial face value of $1,000, but the current market value is $1,200. So, 10% of $1,000 on a one $200 investment results in a yield of 8.33%. In year three, if the company goes through a tough year and appears less dependable, the market value of its bonds may go down. Despite the decrease in market value, the bond still gives regular interest payments. Any new investors who buy these bonds would receive the same interest payment, which means they get a higher percentage of regular interest for a lower initial investment since the market value is lower. The bond market value is $800. Oh, in year three, the yield on the bond is 12.5%. Despite the interest payment staying the same at $100, the yield percentage increases because the bond can now be bought for $800. So, when you calculate the yield as a percentage of the new lower market value, it results in a higher yield of 12.5%. In year four, when the bond reaches the end of its term, the company pays back the initial amount borrowed, the original capital sum, along with any accrued interest. This repayment occurs on a specific date known as the maturity date. Once the bonds have matured, the bondholder does not receive any more interest payments. The bond market value has reached maturity. The return on the bond is $300. This includes the full redemption of the initial investment, which is $1,000, and the total interest accrued over the three years, which amounts to $300. So the bondholder receives both the original invested amount and the earned interest. So folks, I hope that you now know what bonds are. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Watch more videos by clicking on this video right over here.